Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to eonsbattle.com. Today I'm going to be doing a build and review of the Prometheum Forge Industrial Chem Tank Terrain for 28mm Wargaming. Prometheum Forge is a terrain making company. They, uh, you can buy their products on their website and on their Etsy page, and they basically make laser cut MDF terrain for miniature wargaming. These are the supplies I'll be using in the video. So this is the sprue. The, each kit comes with two of these, and each one allows you to build one chemical tank. And I'm going to be using a number 24 a hobby blade to help me cut out these pieces. Now don't use a number 11 hobby blade, because you do have to apply a fair amount of pressure, and the number 11 blades could snap. So the way these kits are designed, they punch out. But as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this uh, with this ladder part, so I'm going to be using the number 24 blade to help me release the piece from the sprue. Once I had all my pieces cut out, I then went in with some 100 grit sandpaper, and I knocked down all of the little connection spots so that they wouldn't end up being raised spots when it came to painting. Also, the rings where you put the aluminum can are designed to fit exactly the dimensions of the can, and so since I'm going to be painting them separately, I made sure to sandpaper the, the opening a little bit wider so that it would fit the can once it was painted. Then I used a full aluminum can, and I used some sandpaper and some wire brush, and I wire brushed off the paint and I scuffed up the surface so that the primer would stick to it better. I then used some wire cutters and I opened up the top of the can because I'm going to be making this tank have an open door and the kit allows you to have an open and a closed tank. I double checked the opening with the piece and I found that I needed to cut it just a little bit bigger. I then prepared myself some wood glue which is what I'll be using to put this kit together with and I used an old brush to apply it. I then began dry fitting the components together, and I used the top standing platform of the piece to hold the three rings in place while I glue on the connection pieces. To apply the glue, I just used an old worn out brush, and then I apply them in place, and then if you hold them in place for a few seconds, uh, the wood glue sets enough that you can let go. I applied two connectors to each side, and then once the connectors are finished, the rings were stuck in place, and then I finished gluing on the top platform. I made make sure that the two little nubs cut out on the top platform match up with the side of the rings that has the peg sticking out. I then took the back hatch, or the closed hatch, and I glued on this little round piece of uh, excess sprue, because I think it gives the back a little bit more dimension. And then I also took this hazard symbol, and then I sanded it down so that it would have a different width. And then I glued that onto the back hatch. I then began putting together my door. Now the door you can build open or closed. If you're building it closed, this is how you would put it together. But if you're building it open, you need to punch out this middle section, clean off the nubs, and then you'd be putting it together vertically. So I very carefully with a hobby saw, I cut off the nubs that you would use to place it horizontally. And then I cleaned up those areas with a little bit of sandpaper. I then glued my door together using a little bit of wood glue. And then I put the ring on the door. And once I was finishing gluing together, I had an open hatch. Then I went on to painting the ladder and the stairs. And so I went ahead and I did one side at a time, gluing on the one half of the hand railing to the ladder. And then I glued on the top part of the stairs. I gave those components a minute to dry, and then I went ahead and I glued on the other side of the handrails. Again, if you find that it's taking a little bit of a while to dry, you can use a hair dryer. And 
And then I went ahead and I used some wood glue and I finished gluing all the components together. Now I made sure that the aluminum can wasn't glued down so that I could remove it for painting. But other than that, the kit is finished. I also left off the front and the back hatch off the aluminum can just to make it easier on myself when it comes to painting. I found these kits on uh, Prometheum Forms Etsy page and I'm really, really happy with the quality of these kits. I find that the inclusion of the using the soda can really helps uh, this, this relatively small kit turn into a much larger piece of terrain than you'd expect from the size of the packaging. And I really think the kit really looks very dynamic and it really paints up very nicely. You'll find in the description below links to Prometheum Forge's website as well as their Etsy page. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can leave a comment if you have any other ideas or techniques you'd like to see us do. You can follow us on Twitter at Eons of Battle, and you can follow us on Facebook at EOB Fans. Thanks for watching.